Memories, like the corner of my mind. Is that the, are sure those lyrics? I'm not sure. You might, re, you might remember me from, my name is Dan Schiffman. You may remember me from Coding Challenge number 20. I think it was number 20. A 3D cloth simulation. So this is a coding challenge I did a while back, and I would like to update this coding challenge. And one of the things I want to do is put an image onto that cloth. And I want to make it more of a flag simulation. So I want to just sort of, uh, so think about it. You could get the, your, the flag of your country, and you could texture it onto this cloth thing and have a waving flag simulation. So that's what I'm going to do. But really, underneath the hood here, <laughs> here's what this, this, this coding challenge is about. It's kind of a tutorial about how to texture geometry. So how you can create arbitrary geometry, arbitrary polygons in processing, and then texture them. And so that's with an image. And what I mean by texture, I mean take the pixels of an image and fill the geometry with those pixels as opposed to just fill with a color. So that's what I'm going to start with. And I'm also going to introduce you to a new friend of mine named Unikitty. But I'll get back to that later. <laughs> Go over to the whiteboard for a second. Okay, here I am. And uh, uh, okay, so what am I talking about here? So you can load an image in processing by saying load image. And that image could be a file like file.jpg or file.png. If you call load image and put the results in a variable like img, you can draw that image to your canvas by saying image and then passing in a reference to that variable and give it an x and a y. And then your processing window canvas, you will see the wonderful kitty cat. I cannot draw at all, but this actually wasn't the worst in the world. If that's a kitty cat, right? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, you're just gonna have to bear with me. I'm just gonna draw it again, right? There you go. Load the image into a variable, draw it there. That's just drawing the actual rectangular pixels of the image exactly as it is in the file. Something else you can do in processing, however, is you can use functions like begin shape and end shape. These are functions for I want to draw my own arbitrary polygon or path. There's a lot of things you can do with begin shape and end shape. It's a vast sort of possibilities. But in the simplest level, what I can do in this function is say vertex x comma y. And then I can say vertex again x comma y. Boy, this pen is terrible. <laughs> I'm back and I don't have another pen, but I will in a future video. So I can set a bunch of vertices. This can be a long, 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 long list. So what does this do? Well, if these are all x, y points, like x, y here, 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 what I've now done is I've created a polygon that is a connected series of vertices. And I could do that algorithmically to make a kind of flower pattern. I've probably done this in a lot of other videos. But what's new here is what if I want the kitty, the image, to be, so I could say fill, right? And this whole thing would turn green. But what if I want to say, uh, what if I want to texture the image into this shape? So I can do that by calling the function texture and passing it that image. The problem is, it's not really a problem, but the, the thing that you might not realize is it, in some level it's as simple as that, but it's not. Because you could say texture this shape, but it doesn't know where, which pixels to put where. So what you need to do for every single vertex is not just give the xy, the xy location of that vertex, you need to say this xy location also corresponds to some xy location in the image. So for example, if I wanted this section of the image to appear here, I would have to then say this xy on the screen, look up that xy in the image. And that's referred to typically as uv. So uv coordinates are lookup coordinates in an image that define the textured pixels. And this, by the way, could be x, y, z. And I think when I do the thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to need x, y, z. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, x, y, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's just make a quick example that does that. So uh, where are we? So I am going to um, come here to a texturing example. I'm going to write a quick little bit of code. Uh, okay, um, and I am going to, <laughs> I lost my train of thought here. I'm going to say size, 600, 400. I'm going to set a background. And then I want to say begin shape, begin shape, end shape. And I'm going to say vertex, 
um, uh, uh, 200, 200, let's just make a bunch of vertices that are kind of arbitrary. I'm gonna say vertex uh, 300, 200, I'll just make it a square right now and say 300, 300, and I'm gonna say uh, uh, 200, 300. So if I do this and I say stroke 255, fill 127, let's see what we get, right? I get this shape, right? Because that's exactly, I really just defined the vertices of a, rec of a square. Now, uh, one thing that's missing here is you notice it doesn't actually, you can't, it's hard for you to see this, but that, the outline does not on this part. So one little uh, thing that you can see is I could say close, and close there will, um, will actually close the shape without me having to, to add that first vertex to the end again. So I could do some things like move these around, um, you know, but let's actually leave them like this. So I think I have an idea for making this a somewhat interesting example. So now I need an image to texture. And here's the image that I'm gonna use. This is Unikitty. It is a drawing drawn by um, an eight-year-old. It is beautiful. It is one of my favorite characters in the world right now. And let's use Unikitty to texture. Now, one thing I wanna double check is Unikitty is kind of like a massively high resolution image right now, which is quite unnecessary. So I'm gonna sample, sample Unikitty down. And I'm gonna do, oh, how can I do this in? I'm gonna say tools, should have done this before I started this video, adjust size, let's just make it, so we can kind of think about it, 600 by 600. And, uh, um, so now, what I wanna do is I wanna say texture, oh, first I need to load the image. P image Unikitty, and then Unikitty equals load image uh, Unikitty <laughs> dot JPEG. And then now I'm going to say texture Unikitty, and I'm going to run this. Now, we don't see. So first of all, ah, we have an issue. Texture is not available with this renderer. So processing has different renderers that draw the scene for you. Your code stays the same, but the behind the scenes renderer does the drawing. And the default renderer is a software-based renderer built on top of Java's default renderer. Um, but the, a, a hardware accelerated renderer for 2D or 3D graphics um, that's built on top of OpenGL and something called Joggle, which is like Java open graphics, is called P2D. So I'm gonna use P2D here. I could use P3D, but um, I'm not doing anything 3D here. So now, what happened? Where's my Unikitty? Okay, so we can see, uh, uh, we can see it's not there. It's because even though now I don't have any errors, I haven't defined those UV coordinates. So what I could do in the simplest sense is I could just assign the full image, right? Because top left of the image, uh, right of the image, bottom corner of the image, bottom left corner of the image. So if I do that and now run it, Boy, it takes a long time to start, or it's like on behind a, okay, that didn't work. Now maybe what I'm missing is, does texture have to go after begin shape? I didn't think so. There we go, I guess it does. So now you can see, there's Unikitty. How wonderful, but this is no different than just drawing the image. But what's interesting about this is, I could, um, trying to think, I could start to move these vertices around. So like, for example, if I just make, you know, X, uh, equal the just the top left corner x equals 200 y equals 200 and I do this x y and then I say you know x uh, uh, x plus equals some random amount <laughs> this is like the least creative thing I could probably do with this uh, but just to show you that it's working you can see now the image itself is going to skew to whatever the uh, geometry is based on the pixels that I've picked so you, you sort of get the idea. This doesn't have to be a square. I could make a polygon with 10 sides. I could assign them weird parts of the image that are different than, than sort of corresponding parts and things will get stretched and skewed. There's a ton of possibilities here, but this is the basic idea. Now, um, in the chat, by the way, I see somebody asking, does processing not do UV coordinates in zero, one? This is a great question. So a lot of programming environments will not take the raw pixel values, but just use what's called like a sort of normalized range. So the image width always goes between zero and one, no matter what the size of the image is. And I believe if I go to processing reference and I look up texture mode, 
and go to that page, I can change image, normal. So this is, a, I think normal is what changes the range, yeah, between zero and one. So I'm just thinking in terms of the raw pixels, but I can use a different texture mode to do that. So that was a great question. Thank you for that in the chat. Okay, um, now, um, so that's basically, now here's the thing. This is definitely in two parts, so I don't know. Um, what I'm going to do, what I want to show you is one more thing. What's very common in a scenario like, um, where is this, like this flag simulation, is that I don't actually want a texture. Now look at this. Are these, oh, these look like they're quads. Oh, I'm going to have to change quite a bit. What did I, how did I actually do this? Oh yeah, so I've actually drawn this as, uh, looking at this as lines. So I'm going to have to redo the geometry of that. And here's a common kind, there's, there's a lot, begin shape and end shape, right? I said begin shape and end shape, sets and vertices, you get a polygon, but there's a lot of kinds of things you can actually put in here that will generate shapes in a certain way. So I could say begin shape, end shape, and give it three points, and it'll give me a triangle. But I could also say begin shape, end shape, and pass it something called triangle, triangle, underscore, strip. What triangle strip is, is if I give it two rows of points, it'll actually make a whole set of tiled triangles. And this is a very common way of tiling geometry, of, of uh, I don't know what the actual right word is. There's a word for this specifically. You know, and there's different triangulation algorithms that you can use to take any arbitrary geometry and get it to be a mesh of, of triangle strips. But I'm not going down that full road. What, so what I want to do is just show you, though, because my cloth simulation is a full big space with all of these interconnected particles, I want to tile it with a triangle strip and then texture the image, the Unikitty image onto it. So let's just do a couple things here to explain this a bit further. Number one is uh, just to go to um, begin shape on the processing reference, um, just to see there are a bunch of things. Like this is what I just did, begin shape, end shape, close, but I could do the same thing but give it points and it's just going to render those as points or as lines and it's going to give lines. Uh, I can use triangles, it's going to do triangles, this is a triangle strip, um, this is a triangle fan, these are quads, quad strip, and then you can see another arbitrary shape. So there's a lot of possibilities here and this is what I'm going to focus on, triangle strip. So let's take a quick look at that. Uh, where am I here? I need to go sketch uh, texturing. So let me come back to here. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how a triangle strip works. So I'm going to comment out that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to comment out the texturing. Let's, I, I guess I'm going to leave this in the code because when I publish this code, maybe I'll just make this one example, but, ah, but I'm going to comment this whole part out and leave it at the bottom. So I'm going to start over. So now what I want to do is I want to say, let me get a row of, of, let me just have a row across. So I'm going to start with X. I'm going to use float. X equals, uh, I'm going to start at 10. X is going to go all the way to you know, 400. I'm just doing this arbitrarily. Let's do 100 to 500. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. X uh, plus equals 10. And then I'm going to say, let me also do have a Y. Actually, let me not have a Y. So what I'm going to do now is I want to say, so one thing I could do, I'm going to say begin shape, end shape. And what I want to do is I want to say vertex, x comma some y, which is going to be 200. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. So I'm showing you that I could write a for loop, and let me, so you can see it, change the color to be white. Uh, stroke, and just make it a little bit thicker so you can see it as well. So this just gives me a line, because what I've done is I've said begin shape, end shape, and I've set all these points across in a line. But notice if I were to say begin shape points, it's going to render it like this. All of those points, those are quite close together. So let me make them further apart and we can see it like this. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to make a triangle strip. So I need to also have a set of points below. So I'm going to say x comma 200 and I'm going to say y, I'm oh, sorry, x comma 250. 
So now you can see these are all these points. Um, and so I can like point to it better. Uh, first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one. And that order is quite important. Okay, the order is quite important because I want to connect, I want to create a triangle and then another triangle. So it's going to do, so if I were to now just say, get rid of the points, what you're going to see it's making is this. And it's weird because it's like connecting the end to the back um, and with a fill. So I'm also going to say no fill. And you can see here is now what I've actually done. I've got this zigzag pattern and now the magic is, oh, no, I'm sorry, you can't see my code. I'm doing a terrible job. Of the, the magic is I am going to uh, add triangle strip here. And now once I do that, you can see, there we go. Now I have a triangle strip. So if I want to texture this triangle strip, all I'm going to do is, and let's use texture mode normal, just to sort of be interesting here. I'm going to say uh, texture mode normal, texture unikitty. And then let's just say um, I am going to, ev so the, uh, the top is going to be zero and the bottom is going to be one for that strip. I'm going to do the full height of the image in that strip. And then I need to say something like um, X. Well, I could, I could say what's the, um, so actually, so I should use some math here. U is map X, which has a range between zero and 500 to between zero and one. And then uh, V, um, V I don't really need to calculate. It's just going to be, so I'm going to say this is U and this is V. So let's do that and see what we get. And what did I, what did I, what did I do? Oh, I didn't, <laughs> zero and one. Sorry. Okay. Uh, lost my, now text, text mode. What did I say? Text mode. Texture mode. There is actually something called text mode, which changes the way text is rendered. And this should really be texture mode. So I, I made a mistake there. Okay. So then we can see, look at this. That whole image is kind of squished into this triangle strip. And it looks like it's just kind of behind this thing, but it's actually textured. And what's interesting, if I start moving all these vertices around or think of them as polygons that separate, I could keep the same image geometry, but move the other geometry around and create all sorts of interesting effects. So this is where I want to stop. This is kind of a, just a, a texturing tutorial that I'm doing as part of taking this into a coding challenge. Um, and so I'm going to, in, in another video that will be linked from this one, I'm going to do a coding challenge where I just apply the Unikitty texture to a flag. The Unikitty flag. I'll see you in that video, maybe. <laughs>